Here's what you missed on the last episode of Random Stick Vibes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. So, Daddy! 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 Daddy!
it's hard to say that it's okay for a man to hit a woman. Um, it's it's very hard for me to to. I get it. Women shouldn't be doing it. It still happens. Um, if anything, I would say slap. You can slap the crap out of her, put her in her place. But because I've I have heard instances of this, and as a guy, it's tough. Especially if you're a much bigger guy. Like like what can just one little thing and. You know, that's a lot of marks already happening. Mm-hmm. And you can't even say it was a mistake. She can't She can't even say all of hers was a mistake, but it's just nothing happens from it. You know, it's just, I don't know. I need, I need, I need, a, little, I need a little time to think about it. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't need no time. I was laughing at the comments. Yeah. <laughs> there was some comments coming up, and they were kind of funny. I wasn't laughing at you. No, but I um I, I don't I don't need no time to think about this. I don't think a man should ever attack a woman, but I definitely think he should be able to defend himself. Because that whole thing of her hit can't hurt you is bullshit. Because punches hurt. I don't care who it comes from. A baby can punch you in the stomach and knock the wind out of you. I mean, we've had babies. We hold babies. Sometimes they step on your balls. It's over. You 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 <laughs> <over your baby. laughs> Period. You know what I mean? So we didn't have these things happen. So women punching you can hurt. It hurts. They just think that because we men, we don't feel no pain. No, we don't show pain. We feel pain, but we don't show the fact that you're hurting us. But at the end of the day, like I said, and, and, and this is one of the things that has always baffled me. They've always said that men, women are more mature and much smarter than, than men. Okay, I've heard that all my life. And why are you not smart enough to know that you 5'3 and I'm 6 foot, you 140, I'm 250, and that's a bad idea? Oh, well, it's, it's smart because she knows the law and the cops are on her side. But here's the thing. What if, what if, I, what if I'm in the mindset that, well, they may not find your little ass because you're alone with me. See, they don't right. think about that thing. You are by yourself with me. In this situation, it's me and you. And who'd you tell that you came over here? Who'd you tell that we was going to be here today or this, that, and the third? See, that's the thing. You don't think about all of that stuff. That man may be in the mindset, okay, well, I'm done. Man, I'm, I'm just going to make sure that they just can't find you. They can't smell your little ass from somewhere. So as far as I'm concerned, keep your hands to yourself. Agree. Because even men understand there's a fight we can't win. Now, I mean, if I if if I'm standing in front of Mike Tyson, I don't give a damn how up in age he is. I'm, my ass is on the floor. Mm-hmm. I'm not fighting that fight. You know what I mean? So I'm smart enough to understand that's a loss. So if you're standing in front of a man, you and a lot of times women choose men because of the size or whatever because they feel like they can be protected. Right. Well, yeah. why would you choose a man? For those provide protect qualities, if you think you can whip his ass, mm-hmm. and that's the part that get, get that drives me crazy. If you feel like you can whip his ass, then why are you picking him? I, I, I don't that even think part. It's like, <laughs> I don't even think it's like they can whip their ass. It, it's more like it, it's more uh, the the concept of why is it that this guy can whip anyone else's ass, but when he restrains his hands against you, you decide to go all out on him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot I've heard a lot of women say, well, he could really hurt me, so I'm defending myself. The best defense is to get the hell out of there. Right. That's yeah. the best defense. Get the hell out of there. Because that day, like I said, he could choose malice. Mm-hmm. And you sitting up there trying to fight him back. And that might be the last time somebody sees you. Get out of there. You know, but don't sit up there trying to fight. And for those for the women that choose to smoke, that choose to start the fight, good luck. Because right. a lot of these young guys out here nowadays, like I said, that young man on TikTok said he's going to get you with the Ryu punch. And a <laughs> lot of these kids feel that way. They're going to hit you with the Ryu kick, and that's it. You're done. You're going down. And you can't assume that chivalry is, is within all of these men nowadays. Because even men in my generation are tired. We're tired. We don't want to be in a situation where we're getting beat up and tenderized like me. Don't nobody want that. 
So at the end right. of the day, you got to keep your hands to yourself before it turned into a whole situation that you don't want. Mm -hmm. JB? One rule, and it's always been my standard rule, and it comes in some of the first conversations I've had with women, is that if you think you're going to put your hands on me, I need to leave right now. Because mm -hmm. I, I condone any level of violence. Um, I was raised in a household where I couldn't have toy guns. I have real guns now, but when I was growing up, I couldn't have toy guns. Um, <laughs> and I mean, we were taught, I mean, even though I was raised mostly by women, um, it wasn't even the fact that I was taught you could hurt a woman or anything like that. It was, I was taught that if you cannot sit down and talk to each other like a responsible adults, then you don't have any reason being in the same room. So, you know, even in the earlier years of my marriage, if we had a disagreement, I would leave out and go somewhere and cool down. I was not going to get to the point where there would be any reason for it to elevate to the point where there would be violence okay. of any type. So for me and my house, as I say all the time, violence is not condoned, accepted, or wanted. And if you want to bring it here, I will walk out the door and you'll never see me again. Period. It's not even, it's not like you can hit me once and I'll come back. You hit me once and I am gone. Period. Because that means you have a propensity to do it again and I will not be a victim because I refuse to be violent on your, to you. And please tell Jessica, I'm not going to hit the baby. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> drop his little ass on the couch. <laughs> floor, I'm not gonna the baby. baby knew what was up. Okay. I mean, baby looked me up and down. <laughs> You know, you, know, you, know, like I was sure. yeah, you know what that means. <laughs> he's old enough to punch. He's old enough to take a punch. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he said, she said, what y'all got? <laughs> <laughs> them titties like chicken cutlets. Stop yeah. it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you didn't see the day. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, growing up, I had many brothers. And yeah, there was no no pity. If, if I got hit, if, if I hit, I got hit back. So I learned very quickly that my strength is strong, but it's not as strong as theirs. You know what I mean? Um, I can be aggressive, but not as aggressive as them. So I, it kind of like put me in my place. But that's not a place I want to be with our men at all. So I never, you know, had that kind of, you know, um, character for men, you know, in any relationship. And that was a boundary set very early. Like, are we not hitting? We don't do that, you know. And right. luckily he had the same mentality and, you know, that, that works, but I grew up seeing a lot of it. So it's not something new. I went to job course. So also seeing women be very combative and jump on family members. So I've seen it personally and, you know, I'm all for it. You put your hands on a man, you absolutely should be put in your fucking place. I'm not for violence at all, but you bring that kind of energy, best believe, expect the energy to come back. To you. And if it doesn't, you're lucky. It's not fair. It's not okay. It's a lot of domestic violence out there that women attribute to men and it's not yeah. shined on. Men do not report it. So the statistics are not accurate. Um, and it exists. And I, I think it's absolutely horrible. And I'm sorry for the men who absolutely have to experience this. And the ladies who are doing it, stop it. She said, I want to know can we get a better rest for the ladies? <laughs> she didn't think that all the way through number one mm. I think she kind of was jumping all over the place she was in and out of realities kind of like Spider-Man you know yeah, um, she, she, does, she does that a lot on that show <laughs> and just, yeah. you know somebody that somebody that uses the term more arrested you know set, says it all <laughs> for the most part she was moving the goalposts a lot in the scenario. She controlled a lot of the, the narrative of the scenario. And it was just, you know, not too accurate in the depiction. But overall, I don't condone violence at, at all. I think JB is absolutely right. And, and men, you know, we have the absolute right to feel the same way. We don't condone violence. We don't choose violence. And we won't 
have it chosen against us and, and we have a zero tolerance you know and i apologize to anybody that has to go through it and and you know i wish i wish that situation was a little bit different let me go dr mm -hmm. phil for a minute because yeah. i remember the episode with dr phil so dr phil says Women are more aggressive, more um, young people are aggressive like that because they experience um, um, childhood, like, you know, um, like when you're getting like whippings, when you do something wrong, you know, being disciplined yeah. physically. Like so I said, they grow up, they grow up to be more physical. Is that true? No, like I said, Dr. Yeah, Bill ain't smart. He's not. Yeah. That's that's the most dumbfounded stuff I've ever heard in my life. It's kind of like saying, that's kind of like saying a beaten dog would always try to bite you. you know, yeah. Fight, yeah, fight or bite anything. Like no, if anything, time, they they probably hide in the corner a lot more. Right. Those are more yeah. the timid kids. A mm -hmm. lot more. Of this, they don't come out of their shell a lot. If anything, they try their best not to ruffle any feathers because they're not trying to get beaten. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, coming from a family where corporal punishment wasn't really the way to go, you, you know, my, my, I, I mean, it, it, when my mom or dad did have to, you know, spank one of us or whatever, because they we did get spankings, you know, for being bad. Um, when they did do it, it was done, and you had a conversation about it, and then they whipped you and sent you into bed, you know. But mm -hmm. I, I don't think it had uh, yeah. that much of a bearing. I didn't feel like I had to go and ch strangle somebody because my mommy beat me for doing something bad. You know, I'm saying that there was no, there's no correlation to me. They try to put it there, but you have so many successful people who says, yeah, when I was growing up, my mom and dad whipped me, but I decided to go a different route with my kids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because they know but, they don't like it. And that's why their kids are in jail now. Yeah. And, right, and, and, and running and, amok. But right. to a certain extent, I only had to use corporal punishment on my son and my daughter once. And the only reason it was used was because they fought each other. Mm -hmm. And I don't, we, that's one thing my family never stood for. You, you do not fight family. You know, you defend family. You're there for family. And my son and my daughter were not going to be fighting each other. And he, they were young. And they just got the little butt spanking. It wasn't no big, and I never had to do it again. Yeah. And I, I, I got my ass beat. I got my ass whipped. <laughs> I, I, I got my ass whipped. Little badass. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I was a badass bad <laughs> kid. I'm not going front, but um, I got my ass whipped. But it didn't make me um, grow up to beat on women because my mama hit me with a belt. No, it it it. it got me to not do the thing that I got my ass whipped for. That's what it was about. It was to make you not, it, it was to make you attribute pain with bad behavior. That's what it was about. My mom didn't beat me senselessly. She didn't abuse me or anything like that. She just made sure that I attributed pain with the action that I was doing that was wrong. It's just that simple. I didn't grow up, grow up hating women. I didn't grow up hating belts because I got one on my damn pants right now. You know, so <laughs> jump every time you see it. yeah, just don't get. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just don't like the belts with the double legs, bro. Them things will kill you, boy. But no, just, <laughs> but I, I, mean, I, did, I didn't grow up, you know, thinking this stuff. It's just like those are people who have mental pro mental issues. You know, yeah. uh, those are people that attributed that they took the took that same pain and turned it inward into something more violent than it should have been when it's supposed to have been a learning um situation they turned it into something that that was a lot more malice because i mean you look at people like jeffrey dahmer he didn't get beat he ate black people you know what i mean so he wasn't getting beat <laughs> on and bruised up and things of that nature it's just the per it, it goes according to the person you know what i mean so yeah i like I said, now i'm not going to sit up here and say that I'm a big fan of corporal punishment, but what I will say is this: it didn't do me wrong. Mm -hmm. It didn't do me wrong, and it didn't. I've never been to jail. You know, I've um um I, I, I've been pr a pretty uh, pretty good stand up citizen most of my life. You know, my mom and my mom and uh, my father raised me well, and yeah, they did have to put the paws on me a couple of times. Hell, I remember one time I got got out of line with my dad. I'm thinking, you know, he's older. You know what I mean? I'm I'm playing football. I got muscles and all of this stuff. And I'm thinking, shit, man, you can't do nothing with me. My father punched me in my chest one time. <laughs> that was the end of that argument. 
That was like, the end of that. Yeah, because I couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe for about five days. So that was the end of that damn argument. See, I didn't realize just because he was old didn't mean because my father's fist was about that big. So yeah, that was all it took was one punch to cave my chest in and crack my sternum real good to make sure I never did that again. But but it but it also it, but also it showed me that. You know, it, it, it basically showed me that this this is not this is not an area you want to enter. You don't want to do that. You don't want to make these types of decisions. But it didn't make me hate my dad and want to catch him somewhere in a dark alley. No, I love my father. You know, so right. you know, a, a lot of times people and say that, you know, this stuff is this bullshit. This bull. It is. Sounds like, sounds like you won a, a one round with uh, George Foreman. That's what that sounds like. <laughs> yes. I'm all in the two hundred seventy five pounds. So close. Yeah, <laughs> pretty damn close. <laughs> so, guys, do y'all think that maybe um, because there is this, you know, law, unseen law, in some places it is law that you know, women know that men are 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 raised or told not to hit women, that they're taking advantage of that fact, so that. You know, even if the man is trying to de-escalate the situation, they continue to do to keep going and become physical because they just know that, OK, I'm not going to be wrong. He's going to be wrong if he if he hits me. So do you think that nowadays women are just taking advantage of a way a, 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 a man is being uh, has been raised to not hit a woman? Absolutely. I would. I had this conversation recently with a couple of ladies, and uh, it's not that they they know that nothing's gonna happen. They just don't care. Like mm-hmm. it's the thought of him retaliating is not even a thought in the mind. Mm-hmm. My buddy and his girlfriend, uh, they got they got into an argument, a pretty heated argument. She wasn't hearing his side. She didn't want to hear his side. It's just like I want I want my way to happen. Um, and they were just going back and forth. So she just has a, a quick one, two to his face. Bop, bop. She was mm-hmm. five. She's five, five man is six, two. She won two of them straight to the face. Hard. Two P. Two P. Two P. Like quick, you know? And he said he, he took everything he had. He punched a hole into his wall. He grabbed, he, he grabbed her by the head and threw her down and just left the house. Mm. Because he was like, yo, like, I don't understand why she thought it was okay to punch me in the face. And we were later when we were talking about it, she was just like, well, like, I just got mad because he wasn't hearing my point. And I was just like, but why do you think he, he made you emotionally mad so he deserves to be physically ins- assaulted? And she was like, well, I just, he wasn't getting my point. And that's when I realized she just, the thought of, him being bigger, stronger, or not hitting her back, it didn't even register to her. She just thought, I want to hit him now. I'm going to hit him. That's just it. Right. And that was that was that was the, the, the extent to it. So the the women that do it, I don't think it's that they think the guy's not gonna hit back. They just that thought is not even in their mind. It's like, okay, well, I don't like how he's making me feel, so I'm just gonna hit him. Yeah. And that's as far as that thought goes. Anger disrupts the thought process. Yeah, so, so it's angry, angry and agitated that they're not even really thinking about the natural progression of when you hit someone, their propensity is to hit back. Correct. They're thinking, I'm I'm going to be deliberate and do this, and they are going to get what's coming to them. Yeah. But they forget that, hey, their reaction could be, did you just hit me? Do you know what I do when people hit me? I hit them back, and you get what's coming to you. Yeah. Luckily, your friend was a lot more, you know, restrained. restrained. We're like we're both boxers, so him hitting her, her wouldn't have been good. <laughs> it, was, yeah. it, it would just be just bad all around. I bad all around. My, whole family runs, my, my family runs a boxing gym, so I know he, exactly. <laughs> you understand? I wanna, um, Hands are licensed, you know what I'm saying? Like, what? Yeah. I want to um, make a point on um, uh, Kenneth Mitchell. He um, he said he gets the question, but what type of f- um, female would ever put their hands on a man? Well, I was in a, an abusive relationship, so I was with a female that had no problem putting her hands on a six foot, two hundred fifty pound man, and she was about five foot two. Yeah. 
and she she legitimately because I did not punch her back legitimately believed she could whip my ass wow. and I had to I had to physically manhandle her hold her down and hold her in position for at least 10 to 15 minutes to get her to understand I'm stronger I'm bigger and you won't survive if I actually throw this punch and if it and, and it clicked once she realized she wasn't moving you're not going to move if I want you to stay there you are there, that's it end of discussion but until I did that well she truly believed that she could whip my ass yeah. I mean, it, it, it was no doubt in her mind. I mean, she used to do shit like like the buck at me. And I'm sitting there like, this Oh, wow. I'm <laughs> like, yo, you literally oh bucking God. at my hip. Like, you about as big as, big as my hip. You bucking at my hip. What you really going to do to me? You, you know what I mean? You got a three-step stool to hit my, my freaking chest. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, so she would, li but she legitimately felt like, yeah, I got him. I got him. No, you don't. You got what I allowed. That's mm -hmm. it. And once I stopped allowing it, and believe it or not, it took nothing for her to turn from aggressor to victim very fast. Mm -hmm. Because when she realized that I was bigger and stronger and I could actually, if I wanted to ragdoll her little ass, I could have. When she realized that, that's when the fear kicked in. But I'm sitting here thinking, why didn't intelligence kick in before this fear had to? Why didn't you take an actual look? and assess the situation and understand you're safe because I let you be. It has nothing to do with the fact that I can't whip your ass. I won't whip your ass. I have never in my life punched a woman. I ain't never slapped no woman. I'm, I've never done it. And I'm not going to because I'm not going to put myself in a position to be around or with a woman that I got to actually put my hands on. But what I now have I wanted to? Hell yes. I have wanted to grab one by the collar and sling a little ass one good time, but I ain't do it. You know what I mean? So you have, yes, as a man, you do have to have a certain degree of restraint. But as a woman, you got to understand your safety is by choice. That's his mm -hmm. choice. He chooses to let you be safe in that situation. Because if he mm -hmm. chooses violence, that's your ass. Yeah. He said, she said. Wait, so you, you never woke up one day and just thought, you know, I just want to kind of go punch a woman. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> okay, what? So, like near, nearest one on the subway, maybe the train. Oh, no, what I was living with that one. I was living with that one. The one I wanted Wait, to punch. We the disclaimer button. Right there. <laughs> yeah. I, I woke up in the middle of the night. I should just turn over and knock them. Yeah. I never did. I never did. Oh. <laughs> I need it. She's snoring way too loud. I don't know. I need to stop this somehow. Yeah, her, her oh nose is whistling. I gotta stop this. I, I can't stop. <laughs> no. Oh, so wake up. With it was a lot to unpack in that one, but I think ultimately it's easy for women to act like this towards us, as far as confrontational, as far as physical, even because it's a win-win situation for them. You know, um, ultimately, if they call the authorities, we'll We're probably be believe. persecuted. And, you know, all of the rest that comes with that rabbit hole. It's a coincidence that it shares commonality with the last topic and the fact that even the young gentleman that just chimed on and he's been given some incredible insight. They kind of lose reality. I, I said it last time about the last young lady. She was jumping in and out of realities. And they kind of lose reality because he said the guy was bigger. He was stronger. He had licensed hands. Teddy said a young lady thought she can confront Teddy. <laughs> That's not realistic. At all of her young lady. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and like the last... They, you know, the cops, they, she wanted her to call the cops on the young man who can probably kill him, but she don't want him to grab her arm, but oh so hard. Exactly. You're right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's a little bit of reality jumping and, and kind of playing things out. And the last thing I'm going to say is The Art of War is an incredible book. Everybody should read it. Something we were all told to read as men. Yeah coming up and 
retaliation is a really big deterrent. Mm -hmm. If someone thinks the retaliation is greater than their action, it may deter them from their action because, you know, again, think it all the way out. And that's, you know, that's something that we don't do. You have to have the courage <laughs> and the thought to say, you may get me now. Right. But when I come back, I might come back with the thunder. You really exactly. want it. And they say, you know what? Let me, let me weigh this out. You know what? It ain't worth it. You, you go ahead. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think it's a win-win for the ladies. They know ultimately we're bigger. If we put our hands on them, we go into jail. They can mm -hmm. put their hands on us as much as they want to a limit. And when we get to that limit is when everything comes to the boil so it's a touchy situation everybody be careful i love all of y'all like, yeah you know i'm gonna play a little devil's advocate <laughs> i think it's the same thing with men so you have you see the same you know domestic violence stories with men they manipulate and love upon you and you fight and you know you get assaulted as the, as the woman and it's the same thing let me see how much you love me exactly i assault you you stay you still here we fucking later Yes. Let oh, me see I how much you love me. That. I'm gonna choke you <laughs> now. Now, while we fucking, I'm gonna choke you. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you don't know how it, it can get really, um, you know, crazy with it and and a little sexy all at the same time. So you know, you stay around a little. <laughs> Let me see what's going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and I, I was, I was just it happens like that. It absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hundred. Like I, I truly believe that now that women just love anarchy and chaos. Men love peace. Women love chaos. Like if things are too peaceful, like I would say, if women are younger, if when things when women are younger and things are too peaceful, they can't handle that. Guys, throughout our whole life, we love peace. We love comfort. We love stability. Right. Women do not. They crave anarchy. They crave chaos. They crave if if things are too stable, that something has to something has to break. They have to break something for them to feel alive. Mm -hmm. And that was nice meeting you, my man. Yeah, that's that's just what I think. And I was going to well, say that's what I've noticed. I don't even say what I, that's what I think. That's what I've noticed. I was going to say. Um, what do you guys think about? Because you know, we are when we talk about women that that are being uh, abused by a guy, but I think I've been noticing like men are having that same. I forgot what they call it, but they stick around. They they won't. They don't want to leave the abusive woman. Like they like her. Home syndrome. <laughs> right, right, right. And I'm like, <laughs> because I mean, I've seen like okay. I hope they're not listening. Like my neighbors. <clears throat> oh, they can't. <laughs> like she she be wailing on little dude all the time. And he keeps coming right back. <laughs> I'm like, I'll be like, what? <laughs> little dude, like, you need to go. Like scratches all on his face. You know, they would be going at it in the hallway. There's blood all in the hallway and stuff. Blood? And then Yeah. Oh, she be tearing him up. Like, yeah, beating him down. And he comes right back. So it's like, oh my God, please help me understand that. I don't like well, I mean ooh. I would say it's similar to a situation as when when a woman is in it, is she it's not that she loves to be beat. No mm -hmm. no one ever wants to be beat. Mm -hmm. But they feel that I, I would say some some people um some people if they grew up in a, in a in a toxic environment like that that's what they kind of see as love oh if i'm not getting some level of reaction this level of reaction out of them they don't really love me people yeah. people that if anything i would say people that go through that they can't handle a normal functioning relationship they'll think something is wrong mm -hmm. if, the, if if things aren't escalated to a level where it gets physical yeah I got you. it's just uncomfortable it's like it's some is same um same thought process as like someone that grows up in a bad environment or in the hood like when they go to a like a, a good area they feel uncomfortable there they're not used yeah. to it. things are too quiet things are too silent there's something going on they kind of they thrive a little bit more in the chaos their their minds a little more at ease in the chaos 
So I wouldn't say like the men love it. Same similarly, the women don't love it, but it's just what they now get used to. I would say. Yeah, um, she said just said same situation as the one. I'm sure. Um, hard to get out. Financial kids, no family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah most definitely. Just leave. All that other stuff will work itself out. Mm -hmm. To me, I mean, I know people who say, you know, well, I'm staying for the kids and I'm staying for this and I'm staying for that. Nah. And that's the key to why, I mean, for me as a man, that's my peace. If you're breaking my peace, I can't stay. No. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with, with, I agree with GB 100%. Um, Whitney Houston told me the greatest love of all is loving myself. And one thing I always said is that I knew me before I knew anybody, before I knew my wife, before I knew my kids, before I knew anybody, it was me with myself there from day one. So I always have to be good in order for the cup to spill it over, so to speak, because none of us have love in abundance. We all have to fill our cup. And then our cup have to spill over to other people. So if yeah. we're not good, there's no way other people are going to be good. So love yourself. Be good to yourself. People treating you fucking bad, you, you break out. Like JB said, shelter, resources, family, friends, sleep in your car, sleep under the fucking bridge. But you let that person know, I'd rather sleep under the bridge than sleep next to your fucking ass. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> King and I Life Podcast is here. You want to chime what's in on the call? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's yeah, up, I man? want to chime in on that. Um, on peace, brother. Hi. Peace, brother. What's up? Hey. I agree with with everything that y'all were saying, and um, well, part of the issue with that is a lot of people don't respect boundaries for one, and when it comes to Stockholm syndrome, a lot of men who are in those situations at, although we like the peace, we try to try to hang around to try to fix that person. We think that we could save them from their own self-destruction. So we, sometimes we hang around for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 804, you want to, I said 804. Mr. Best in the world. <laughs> you want to chime in? <laughs> What's going on, Sam? Shout out to everybody on the panel. Hey, Clement, good to see you. Peace, peace. What's going on? Peace, peace, peace. You know what I mean? Hey, you know, shout out to my fellow Brooklyn bro. He said, she said, what's going on, bro? You know what peace I'm to the God. Peace to the God. Yeah, you know what it is, man. Definitely, definitely. You know I mean, what's the word? And definitely realistic. What's going on? Um, I think that, you know, you're talking about relationships, right? Like, what, what do people, people putting out with, basically? Mm-hmm. Not, uh, well, uh, yeah, it's not, my, it's not my show. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I, I want to be on topic. Um, I, th I think that sometimes, you know, in relationships, you know, you have to. Uh, the best piece of advice somebody ever gave me in a relationship is the, in relationships, you have to be the most selfish. You're picking a mate. You have to be the most selfish. And you have to find somebody that really matches your energy and vibe. You know what I mean? So if somebody is off from that and they're not being that for you, then, you know, you have to keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you stay, then you're going to wind up, you know, shortchanging yourself and you're going to live with regret. And who wants to live like that? Nobody wants to live with regret. So we got to keep that in mind. We're picking someone and we and we have to stick to our standards, our morals and our boundaries and not settle at all. Yeah, I was because I was just thinking like in, in this scenario, like my neighbors, like, you know, <laughs> I know like you know in the dating process i know like you know you show those types of behaviors before you even like get married or get serious so it's like i think a lot of times people say well um oh they were just mad and, or, or they're changed or i can change them so they don't be um you know physically abusive or whatever but um but if, if that person has like an anger issue where they all you know that's how they show their anger by putting their hands on you I don't think that's ever going to change. So why stick around with that? Because somebody's going to go to jail. And it's usually the man, even though the woman is the aggressor. So, yeah. 
All right, I guys. Like the best in the I, mean, way said. I think that's that's the level of just being realistic. I think, yeah. like you said, it's not going to change with just you know us hoping it's going to change. And you can <laughs> you working on yourself because you the one that drove the car into the ditch. So now you're a tow truck driver and you are you know qualified to pull it out too. I don't think so. So either you go into therapy, you're finding some professional help, or you know you. We got to go because me and JB, we care too much about ourselves to even be involved with all of that. And if, if it ain't lining up, the proof ain't in the pudding. Deuces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.